Today I have the pleasure of speaking with mining strategist and the founder of Halgarten and Company, Christopher Ecclestone. How are you, Christopher? Very well, thanks. I'm so happy that you could squeeze us in today because the markets seem to be raging. I mean, absolutely raging. What is happening out there? We know we've seen a lift in gold and you were talking about zinc earlier. Uh, it's, it's a very strange sort of moment because the oil price has risen and it's fallen and they're, they're very conflicting signals there. But in the absence of anything else, gold has sort of made a, a pretty significant move today of over $20. But interestingly, silver has broken out and is heading towards $17 an ounce, which is um, territory it hasn't been at for a very long time. Um, and then the base metals are lifting up. And this is strange because generally when gold and silver is strong, the base metals go down and vice versa. So they're all moving up at the same time. Um, this may very well be the end of the many years of gloom that we've had in the mining sector. Too early, though, to call a, a definitive turn because um, that's been done before and uh, people have ended up with egg on the face. But um, quite a lot of um, positive signals at the moment. So, so maybe we're finally breaking out of the, um, the swoon. Well, speaking of breaking out, hopefully and possibly, you're going to be coming to Toronto for the Clean Tech and Technology Metal Summit May 10th and May 11th. And uh, we know that you're following a number of uh, uh, technology metals. Can you give us a little bit of an update on what's happening in the technology metals? All the focus is now on lithium. Um, it's, it's almost an obsession with lithium at the moment, um, which I hope will spin off, uh, spill over into the other metals. Um, as people make money on one, they'll start to know and what's the next one or get the feeling that they missed the boat on lithium. And certainly with some of the moves in the lithium space, there is the temptation to think that there might be a pullback there. But um, if people make money on one thing, then they look around where to redeploy that money into the next thing. And if everything's rising, I mean, that can, you know, then have a, like a firestorm effect that um, it lifts a whole lot of boats at once. So. Um, it, it could be interesting to see whether we might actually see some movement in some of these very bad spaces like um, like rare earths, um, which runs pretty much 50% on sediment and 50% on reality. And um, we may see that happen. And then there's uh, uranium as well, which you are, while not a technology metal, um, is definitely an energy metal and is definitely in the dumpster um, and could well do with a lift. I think uh, uranium being in the dumpster is definitely an overstatement in that it's uh, been in the dumpster for so long. Uh, I was happy to see that you wrote another update on uranium this morning because I myself am a uh, nuclear en energy enthusiast. Can you tell us what is happening in the uranium market right now and what we need to see to see this turn around? Well, the, the big problem is that um, you know Fukushima hit everyone um, for a six back when it happened. Uh, but the Japanese had contracts for buying product. They kept buying it over all these years. So now that they've reopened, a lot of people in the market imagine, oh, the Japanese are going to run out and buy product. No, the Japanese have been stockpiling product because they were making good on their contracts to purchase. So we have this situation that there is no real Japanese you know, kick to the market. Indeed, uh, Japanese are running down stockpiles that they've built up over a very long time when they weren't actually consuming the product. So what we really need is we need some of these plants that you keep hearing about in China, the 200 plants, you know, some of them to actually get finished and start soaking up, um, uh, the, the what's uh, tightening up the product. There's not a lot of product out there, but the price is low. Um, it wouldn't take much demand in the uranium space and people starting to go out and write forward contracts to get the contract price to rise, because ultimately the stock, the spot price doesn't really matter. It's the contract price that does. I'd like to thank you, Christopher, for reminding me. I have a number of phone calls out to uranium companies. We'd like to see them at the Clean Tech and Technology Metal Summit. And speaking of a kickoff, you uh, did a forecast column recently where you were saying that you anticipate zinc more than doubling and copper and lead up 50%. I think that was over several years, obviously. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, that's a projection through to the end of 2019. So I have a long period before which that can uh, potentially come to fruition. Um, it's essentially a, an industrial reactivation story um, combined with severe underinvestment. Um, 
We've had the underinvestment in zinc for a long, long time, but there hasn't been much demand, so it didn't really matter and it didn't really show up. Um, if we get even a modicum of recovery in demand, that could be um, a, a pretty important kicker for getting the zinc price up. And what we've had is a severe attrition with mines closing down in recent times. Um, same thing, um, but to a lesser degree, in, in copper. Um, you know, the copper projects are very expensive to get going, as are nickel projects. And so there hasn't been much investment in really the last two or three years. So there will be a supply gap, maybe not a crucial one in those metals, but the, you know, particularly in nickel, you know, there is a lot of supply out there. But copper, lead, zinc, I'm, I'm very bullish on where they could be going. Uh, Christopher, you actually told me about Neo Metals. Uh, you've been doing some great analysis in the last couple of years where you've been projecting and doing buy recommendations and a bang on. You brought Neo Metals to me at two cents. And I'd just like to, to congratulate you on this one. I saw a terrific uh, report recently on Chesapeake Gold, which is going through the roof. Can you talk to us a little bit about the highlights of some of your most recent reports? Yeah, I've done. Unfortunately, uh, the market has been with me on this um, because you can produce a report and nothing happens. Um, but in the case of um, Chesapeake, we've seen a, a fifty percent rise since our recent note went out. Um, Hardy Gold um, is storming. It was storming before the note went out, and it's kept sto kept storming upwards. And uh, Neo Metals, of course, is up um, a thousand percent um, <laughs> since I wrote that note at two cents. Um, so I want a thousand percent, two thousand percent, indeed. Um, what's another thousand percent between friends? Well, speaking of that, uh, you will be introducing uh, Neo Metals uh, CEO uh, or managing director Chris Reed, who will be presenting at lunch, and of course uh, Darren Townsend from Peak Resources will be there as well, as well as Adrian uh, Griffin from Lithium Australia. We're looking forward to see you, and I'd like to thank you for joining us today, Christopher. Thank you. Thank you.